call this meeting to order. If we could stand for the pledge. Sorry. <laughs> Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, if you could take a few minutes in silence, any cell phones or any devices for there to be any interruption during the meeting, we would appreciate that. We are changing the order that's up there a little bit. We're going to start with the middle school transition update. Can you start the volume? Yes. So, team, I'm just going to kill some lights here. Thanks, Marshall. <laughs> Hi, good evening everybody. My name is Jeff Cervoni. I'm the principal here at the Junior Senior High School, as you know, most of you know. And we're here to give you a brief update on some of our middle school um, transition team. So before we start, I'd love to introduce everybody at the table with me here. Go ahead, Pat, I'll let you start. Lucinda. Lucinda Karstick, Director of IT and part of the team. Kate McKenna, Assistant Principal at the Junior Senior High School. Lori Malkowski, 6th grade teacher. Joanne Meredith, 6th grade teacher. Kathy Hubert, 6th grade teacher. Awesome. So we've been probably working on the middle school for a good year. We started uh, back when Mark Graff was here. He was sort of leading the charge. And we had a small team of myself, Mark, Lucinda, Pat. You guys want to see that? So moving forward from that, we, uh, we started with a small team to kind of get some of the foundational work done. And we talked about what it looks like sixth grade coming up and some of the transition pieces. And this really the big part for us is scheduling the sixth grade into our seventh through twelfth schedule. So we've been working with BOCES, um, here we BOCES on what you call a sandbox to help us kind of play around and see how things work. So we've, we've done some really good, solid foundational things. And since then, we have reached out and we met with just the sixth grade team to sort of welcome them into the transition and kind of pick their brains on questions, concerns, anything they felt was important. We had a great meeting, I don't know, probably a couple months ago. Uh, since then, we have created the Middle School Transition Committee, and we really opened that up to anybody who's interested. We had our first meeting last, maybe two weeks ago, with probably around 20, 25 people who are interested in the uh, middle school, to be part of the middle school transition. Through that meeting, we discussed what does sixth graders look like coming up to the middle school, act, you know, extracurricular activities, their involvement, athletics, intramural programs. We developed a small subcommittee that's going to work on PR. How do we start? pushing information out to the community, to the board, and you know, to our faculty and staff. So all in all, that was a, it's been a pretty, I think, a pretty productive uh, beginning to our middle school transition. Questions so far? Mm -hmm. I'll go this one. All right, slide two, if you look at the screen, kind of digs a little deeper into our what our middle school focus is and what we're really doing is creating two two schools within this building. Uh, grades 6 through 8, our middle school, uh, 9 through 12, our high school. Uh, and some of the things that came up out of a lot of our planning is we really thought that the middle school would be great upstairs in this building, 6, 7, and 8. And through some of our team and committee meetings, we've created a map and room assignments that we think this will work well. We think we have space for all the sixth grade teachers to come up, and the seventh and the eighth. And our goal is to truly keep that middle school contained upstairs, with the understanding that there are certain things that happen in Eden Middle School, Eden High School, that will cause our students to travel the building. But we certainly have a focus on keeping them moving less and keeping them upstairs in the middle school as much as possible 
especially the sixth grade. Some of the focus of our sixth grade coming up is a STEAM focus. We really want to focus on the science, tech, engineering, arts, and math. So we're working on kind of neat, cool ways that we can integrate that. We're excited that when the sixth graders come up, it'll be a one-to-one -one initiative by then, so they'll all have Chromebooks. We think that's going to lend itself well to our personalized learning initiative. We have a team concept for our sixth grade, and we hope as we phase it in with sixth grade that we can move that concept into seventh and eighth as we continue to transition through the years. And if you look at the chart to your right, you can kind of see what the makeup's going to be of the sixth grade teams. What we've done to kind of keep our sixth graders moving around less than the rest of the building is we've created these academic blocks or periods. But if you look at team A, we're looking at two teachers. The class is roughly 100, a little over 100 students. Periods one through three are academic blocks, so we're figuring 25 to 27 are doing ELA and social studies. That same number are doing math and science. Middle of the day, we love this idea of lunch, all of them having a common lunch, having a specials rotation as a period, some 10 week blocks of some you know, exploratories or specials that they don't currently get in sixth grade, so we're, we're loving that idea that they can maybe see a tech, a fax, a health. And part of what we love about this too, these exploratories, is that it helps us meet some of the middle school mandates that happen that need to happen before the end of the eighth grade. And then it follows with another academic block at the end of the day, sort of the flip of the morning schedule where we have three periods academic block, and we've just included that resource AIS STEAM time. We're hoping for a possible, we're kind of noodling with the idea of a possible push-in STEAM concept where we may have a teacher go in and do some of the activities with the sixth graders. So on top of that, we go up with something. No, if you could just stay on that yeah. for a moment. Um, mm -hmm. if, if you could just share maybe some details behind the no bells on these quote blocks. I know we don't necessarily want to use the word block because we have different connotations. Right. And if you could also just talk some more about what is the purpose of a team, because I'm not so sure that everybody sitting here understands the purpose behind the team. That would be great. So the purpose of the blocks is we're trying to acclimate the sixth graders and keep them upstairs in that middle school as much as possible. So our goal would be to not have bells ringing every 41 minutes, but to give teachers that pretty much that 41 minutes times three hunk of time to do their academics. Certainly some academic freedom in there and how they, how they want to teach their classes. But we like the idea of them not moving real far within the building during those periods. Um, now we've set up the upstairs and we've already made all these changes moving to next year where we have the sixth graders pretty much are two rooms on this side of the hall and two rooms across the other side and it's been a really nice kind of planning of rooms that it's happening this year for next year even though the sixth grade's not here jump in this into the planning if there's anything yeah. um, well actually I was talking to Mr. Shepard before the meeting is that part of the plan is that um, we have no money in the capital project to do like remodel or whatever, but it would be nice to be able to freshen it up like uh, we've pointed out. We'll be coming to the personalized learning, which is the Chromebooks one-to-one, -one, and um, we've been doing some research on this already, and that might mean non-traditional desks. And I think if you've seen some of what the newer classrooms are. So I've been already talking with the sixth grade teachers about trying to develop maybe some seating areas versus, you know, they don't need to be in rows and things when, you're, when you've all got your own devices. So, I'm trying to be a little more creative and have some more, you know, um, collaborative area, which I'm going to transition right into that period four through six. Um, that gives the teachers their lunch, gives them their prep period, but it also gives them a collaboration period, which feeds right into the team. So that we're hoping that during those academic blocks, that they can have time to do um, co-curricular co activities, 
and having that time to plan that during those periods every day, being able to because do right now we don't have they don't have planning right now. It also allows you to have um, a smaller group, so that team A, which has uh, two teachers, they've got that 55 to 55, 50 to 55 kids, so they're going to be able to have that deep dive into getting to know those children and be able to address their, their needs a little more. That was sort of our last bullet there was the common planning for teachers. <coughs> and looking to phase this in as we... This model here will also enable the teachers to get to know the students better because right now is when the 7th graders come in, they have at least 7 or 8 different teachers every day. Every 41 minutes, they're meeting a new teacher. So the teacher only gets to meet them for 41 minutes a day and really does not know, get to know the students or their needs. This allows the teachers to meet with the students longer, pick out what their needs are, and be more personalized in their teaching towards them. Some of the specials are there below that grid. Um, art, computer, music, PE, fax, which is home, home act or home and careers, technology and health. And these are just things we're talking about and seeing how they're going to schedule. We, we, haven't, we haven't really sunk our teeth into putting this into our scheduler and scheduling 6 through 12, but that's summertime. Yeah, that's a big bear. That's, yeah. We've actually scheduled time with OCs to, again, open up that sandbox and actually now that we're getting closer, we can actually probably start playing with, you know, quote unquote, real kids. And we kind of know who's coming at this point. And, and, we'll we be, well, we, and I like what Pat said because I really love the concept of a team because what we have at the elementary school, including sixth grade, is teachers who know their students well. And, and we need to bring that into our middle school concept because it is a purpose of the middle school. Right now what happens is students from sixth grade come up to a junior senior high school, they come up to a seventh grade, and there's no distinction between seventh grade and twelve. And so we really like this idea of a smaller team um, where the teachers have all the same kids and, and they're familiar students really well. Any questions on this slide? Any? So here's some of the things we've been talking about as a committee. We're liking this idea of some peer mentoring when the sixth graders get here. We're thinking that it would probably work best if we could do it with middle school students mentoring sixth graders. Um, talked a little bit, maybe freshman, freshman academy things, but we're, it's just all stuff we're talking about and, and trying to figure out how that will look. But we think that's an important piece to the middle school and making our sixth graders feel welcome as they come up. And I think the peer mentoring would begin before they get here. Setting the kids down, letting them talk to those sixth graders, telling them what to expect, just giving them a, a familiarity that I think the trip would just ease their minds when they come up here. Uh, looking at certainly parent communication. Not sure how we're gonna schedule parent meetings, but we like the idea of Inviting parents to an evening out, letting them pick our brains, letting them chat with us, showing them grids and schedules, and really making them part of the process. We've been working a little bit with transportation, just some loose conversations around what really changes if sixth graders are on those buses. Do they need special seating? Are they okay with um, all the different grades? So that's certainly something we're thinking about. We've also talked about this staggering of dismissal times and other class changes. And 6 through 12 will be on the same bell schedule because we do share teachers. We have teachers that travel. It's sort of something that's a constraint that we just have to live with. But it's certainly with the schedules doesn't mean we can't say, okay, guys and girls, you can leave a minute early or two minutes early to transition without 700 kids in the halls. So that's something we're working on, and I think I think we can do with without any real issue. We're talking about being creative, maybe with the first couple days of school, bringing certain kids in, letting them kind of get, get an orientation at the beginning without all the other students here. And how can we make them feel comfortable in this building? So we're talking with that first year, with the two grades coming up, we feel it's even more important. And so we're certainly working on ideas around that piece to the, the transition up. 
really we're excited to, it's been a fun project. We're really excited to be working on this. Our summer is going to be focused on working with BOCES, working on scheduling, and probably a couple meetings with the middle school committee to just keep talking about these ideas and making this thing as you know, a success when it, when it happens. I'm excited to see the sixth grade teachers here. Yeah. Do they want to add anything? Well, just we're. I feel that sixth grade is a great team. We've always worked together really well. We're really excited about coming out. And it's always been a little bit difficult to be sixth grade in the elementary schedule because we're always the ones. We can't do that. We can't do that because we're not. You know, we have a more rigid schedule than the primary grades do. So I'm looking forward to it. We all are. And it was great when we met with the sixth grade team because we wanted to welcome them. We had you know, cookies and we tried to like really smooth them. <laughs> we, were, we were nervous they weren't feeling it. And they actually were so positive, so supportive, great ideas. This whole thing has been great. And it's been it's been great working with them so far and how we transition up. And I think they will blend right in. I don't think they are really little kids. I think once they're there, they will just fit right in with everybody else. And, and I know there are a lot of a lot of people are nervous about it. I just think it's been. I think it will be very smooth. kids with their own age groups. So it's, it's, that's not lost on us. That's an important piece to this whole middle school, high school piece. Um, and the other side, when you're saying that like you're trying to get it like eventually um, in the seventh and eighth graders, does that mean like the blocking too? Mm -hmm. like every period? This this pretty much like when you do a, a team you work with a team, or, and that's what a lot of middle schools do, and that's why you do that, so the teachers get to know the kids. So it would be more if you could phase that in somewhat similar to that. It might not look identical to that, but the teachers really want to be able to get into the team concept so they get to know the kids better. And at the 7th and 8th grade level, you're not locked into those regents' credits, so you have a little more flexibility and time. I think that's just to add, when I was, I, not for me, excuse me, um, I went to Iroquois and when I was in the middle school, even though that was uh, 40 plus years ago, we had teams for 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. We were, that was our middle school. And we were in teams for all three grades. And I remember it very distinctly. It was great. What was the name of your team? That I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> we had teams 
yeah. seems to have some nice little overall punctuation marks. I was in semicolon. We'll try to do better than that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but they're like different colors. Yeah, so we're excited to let them pick a team name and create some identity. All right, well, as, as we move forward, we will. Thanks, ladies. I hope it's just going to be over there. Reminder, the Smart Schools Investment Bond Act is a New York State uh, finance to improve educational technology infrastructure and improve learning and opportunity for students throughout the state. There are four focus areas. Uh, the learning technologies is which we submitted our first one for, for the pilots for the uh, GLP and for the elementary school with the iPad minis and the Chromebooks, which are hopefully coming in next, uh, next year at some point. On the committee that reviews these only meets quarterly. They met last July. They did not meet in October. They did not meet in January. They met in April, but the list was so long, even though we were submitted, we did not get into the review panel. Um, on, uh, I know this because I talked to Mr. Shepard, it was on um, uh, our budget vote day. They contacted me and asked me to remove our um, a few things, and I did that, and I just checked right before I came. We are still in the review keeping our fingers crossed because the next time they're supposed to meet is July. So if we get into there, get approved, hopefully we still will be able to move forward with our proposed uh, plans for the learning technology uh, for proportion um, this year. Um, so now moving on, I just want to say our total allocation is oh, 958018 dollars. Uh, that money is there forever, so supposedly. We don't have to spend it any any speed or rate or whatever. Our first submission was for a little higher, and that's why I'm pointing that out. I think we were at 295 with taking everything out that they asked me to take out. We're down to 265, so we saved a little bit of money. Um, this new second submission is for $440,102, and it will be for security. That leaves us that we will still have 252000 which is more than what our first submission is right now. So I'm hoping that if we need to go back here in a little bit, that we'll be able to go back maybe for some more um, learning technologies here in the next few weeks. Again, there's no time limit. So we just deem that we need to go back. We have some more money in the well, so to speak. So what is the security proposal? So um, the capital project is currently replacing all of the learning <coughs> district-wide all of our switch closets, so basically our technology infrastructure. They are increasing enough switches and drops and the wiring that we will need to replace our analog system with this, this security proposal and put in the digital security system. So um, once the capital project finishes their stuff, then this project will take an effect and add on. My goal is hopefully by next summer so that we'll be ready to go in the fall of 2018. Um, Dave and I met with the the um, company that's through BOCES that will be doing this um, for BOCES support. Um, we met for a very long meeting about a year ago with the principals designing where not only to replace our old analog system but to improve it with the digital but also improve our camera security. We are woefully under 
video, I guess that's the right word, right? Uh, so we, there's some there's some dead spots, which kids can hold your ears at right now that we need to we need to cover. Um, so um, that's our goal too, is to increase that. Um, along with that is we currently do have a VoIP uh, phone system that was put in in 2005. It has extremely aged out. We're going to be keeping our fingers crossed that it survives this next year while we're waiting one more year. Um, we can put that in as part of the security because this new system has um, features such as any phone in the district you can call and will basically call a lockdown for the whole district. They also, um, the best way I can tell you, you've been to your doctor's office and you hear the phone speak as a PA system. In the capital project, um, remember there was a lot more that we needed to get. One of those things was probably our PA systems in all three buildings. They're on their last legs. Um, very nervous. They know it's my palms sweat that they're going to die on us. Having this VoIP system will be able to um, send broadcasts through the phone, so it's, it's, a, it's an additional PA system. So it'll give us that extra coverage to be able to um, send those notifications if we're in the lockdown or whatever. There's a code, whatever, going on in the building. So um, I think I just covered everything there. Do you have any questions about what we're including? Again, the two, the two projects are separate, but they go together. They're going to fit together and kind of mesh in when one finishes one goes on. What is the new phone system? Who makes it? No. Um, it's through BOCES also. It's going to be through Anise and it'll be Cisco again. Wow. So, yeah. So, uh, I had to get exact quotes just like I did the last time. Uh, so, I have exact quotes for um, both the new uh, digital system, cameras, installations, which, um, as Dave's telling me, his people are not going to be climbing up and putting them at the tops of the buildings where we need them to be. Uh, but also the tear out and installation of the phone system and the programming for both of these systems. Um, and I think I explained what was already done there. Um, so again, just to explain the pro process of being able to submit something. Uh, we started this with the first step last September by having our instructional technology plan approved last September. Um, I also have to share this with uh, community-based uh, committee, which I've been graciously accepted into the District Shared Decision Making <coughs> Committee uh, in October and to present the first submission and they've had me back every month and I've kept them up to date where we are with that submission and also they've been um, hearing reports out on this submission. Uh, presentation to the Board of Education. Um, tonight, later on, you'll be asked to approve the draft plan. Um, if you approve it, I will post it to the website for 30 days, which I figure that's going to probably be the August meeting. Um, before the August meeting, just like I did for the other one, we'll have an open door if anyone has any questions. I also have a submission on the website if I bring any, um, I think I have what, one, one positive email from the first time around right, to uh, share with you. Um, if everything goes well um, at that August meeting, you would vote that as approved and then I could submit it to the state the next day. If there's anything you want me to change, and that's why I say either August or September, we could go back and just repeat that process again to you guys feel comfortable approving it. So what are you anticipating through the SED timeline? Hopefully if, I, if they're quarterly, if they meet and they queue, they clear out the queue today, uh, this uh, July and it doesn't get too big in October, possibly we could be ready to go and get approved in October or January. Again, everything that we're, since we've already basically got the quotes ready to go, um, I don't think it would take us that long to get um, scheduled to get it installed. Again, my goal is hopefully once the capital project has all the infrastructure in, that we'd be able to install it. This um, this is summer. dependent on the capital project installation being finished, finished. Though, right? Yes. So having this in September doesn't do us no good. no. So that gives us a little time. So, so yeah, we I, we won't be able to install this the earliest until next summer, and even then it might be at the end of summer because I know that some of the crucial work at the GLP isn't happening until summer of eighteen. Okay. And I think one. Point from a financing standpoint, the city and I've talked about this too, is really drives when you want to do it. You wouldn't want to start this work in February because you'd be spending the money out of your this year budget. You probably would not get the reimbursement from the state to the following year budget. So you really want to do the work at the beginning of a budget year so you get that money in the same year. So theoretically, even if they approve us in October, 
we might not go forward because this is a reimbursement program in, until purchase until July of 18. Correct. So the last thing you want to do is take $400,000 out of your budget in January and not be able to replenish it that year. Well, and, and, and if you can't really use it, it <laughs> the warranty yep. starts running. Right, we want the current, most current budget. So. And how long are, this, are these good for? Because a replacement program is always important for us. It depends. It depends. Five? Um, at least five, probably, with the cameras. Um, the phone system, again, let's let's do the math. Our We bought our current system in 2005. It probably was end of life. 2015, so I would say probably a good 10 years. Would you say yeah, that? most uh, voice yeah. systems are usually 10 to 15 years. Uh, so we life. need to anticipate this cost in the 10 to 15. And again, at least start planning it. I mean, even here, we've been talking about this for two years, and now hopefully it's going to happen here. So it'll be at the 13 year out. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, Cindy, you said they didn't meet in October or January this past year. Yeah, that's kind of scary, isn't it? Well, I'm just if it happens again this year, yeah. you know, you're looking at... Yeah, not till April, but still April would... If we're, if we're in the queue and we're okay. successful, we should be okay. Worst case, July, and the system doesn't get installed to early fall anyway. And so. there's a possibility that they don't meet because they need to slow the process down because they don't have enough money to fulfill the orders that are coming in. That is also a possibility up at that level. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you, and I will be back in August. <laughs> thank you. All right. Moving on to item C, capital project update. Well, actually, we're going to do two things. One is a catch-up on something that we did, which was another expense. Okay. Um, recall that we did this pipelining process for the cogeneration plant, and uh, I'm happy to report that the work is done, and it's working fine. So I was asked to put a presentation together for you so you can kind of see how the whole thing went together. So um, basically what we did was empty out the piping, opened it up, washed everything out, set a camera through, dried everything, and if everything worked the way we assumed, we essentially were going to save about $30,000 by putting a lining in our existing pipe rather than replace everything. So we had 200 foot sections of 6 inch pipe that needed to run glycol, which is the cooling material for the generators, at roughly 195 degrees. And that water runs into our heating system here at the high school. So the process is basically the liner is laid out. They calculate how much resin they need to put into the liner, mix the pro uh, appropriate proportions. They prepare the bladder by sealing one end and putting a pull up a pull ring on it so that once it's installed in the, in the pipe, they can pull it through. They mix the resin, basically using a funnel, they feed it into this liner. They saturate the liner in about eight foot sections, and that you, what you can see on the pic, the photo on the right is where that resin is actually saturating the liner itself and it starts weeping through to the outside. And they use basically linoleum rollers and they just keep working that resin throughout the entire length of that piece of, of liner from one end to the other until it's completely saturated. They fold the edges in in 12 inch to 18 inch increments and they tape it up. They basically slide it into the pipe. Once it's slid, slid into the pipe, they take compressed air and they inflate the bladder that's inside of that liner and allow it to sit overnight under pressure, roughly around 25 to 30 pounds pressure. Once dry, they re-image the end video camera and return the pipe to service. And there's one slide that isn't there. So um, basically what, I, what I'm telling you is that we're very happy with the installation. We're very happy to let you know that it's working. We're not leaking glycol anymore. 
and the process worked very well. And saved a lot of money. And it was the cheapest option we could all believe it or not. Didn't close. <coughs> yep, we didn't have to start the school Art without training. Though, I need you to know that. So, <laughs> that's the process. The company uh, was real happy to see me take all those pictures and put this together because they wanted to use it on their website as well. <laughs> so, the second thing that I want to talk about is capital construction. And I want to remind you as we go through this that some of the pictures you're going to see are probably a little saddening. Is that a good word? Um, will make you sad because of what's going on. And I want to tell you that whenever you start tearing things apart and you know it in your own home, it's kind of a gloomy situation. But you look at what the far reaches are and what you're trying to attain and it's all worth it in the end. So this slideshow is going to run itself through and at the end I'll take questions. And each slide will last approximately five seconds. So Dave, we're seeing pictures of current conditions? You are seeing everything from when we started. Those were staging areas. That's the bus garage offices. We're doing brick pointing. That was a classroom yesterday. As was that. As was that. That's the locker rooms in the elementary school, the shower areas. Where did those teachers put their stuff? That's the, that's the lobby. That's the phone booth. That's the arch going to the second floor. That was the phone booth. And we saved it. Well, it's <laughs> it didn't come out real well. No, auditorium. New gutters going on the front of the building. A small roof that's being replaced. Repainting the front facade. That's one section that's been finished. That's going to be the high voltage line going from one building to the other. That was the leaky brickwork before during the reason it leaked down into the hallway and after. Okay. Swimming pool, reason the tile was buckling. And still a problem. The chimney that was ready to fall down has been repointed. Band room. Chorus room, no risers. That is one of the pra set of practice rooms. That's, I think, what we call the strange room in the back. Mm -hmm. Auditorium, pay attention to the lights on the left versus High the right. High school? Yep. That's what the new lights are going to look like once all of them are in. That was the loading dock. <laughs> <clears throat> that was the football field. Drainage. More drainage. Our hopes is that the storm management Electrical. system up on that hill are going to solve some problems down closer to the baseball field and the tennis Concession place. stand. Yep. Concession stand. More drainage that will be laid out on the field, under the turf. Some replanted trees. Those are the trees going up to the existing football. <coughs> Pay attention to this slide. Okay. Why? Why? Yeah. Now I'm going to show you.
that was that piece of dirt. That's the retention chamber for all the water that's going to come off of the football field. This was a big issue with a lot of the farmers. Which comes off of Jennings, right? No. It's primarily what's going to come off the football field, right? This is a time lapse camera. What was the concern That we were going to send the same thing that happened to North Collins. North Collins didn't put this in. Mm -hmm. So when they put their field in, they ran the, the drainage from that right into a creek, and it flooded a lot of the businesses and homes downstream. So by putting this in here, this thing is going to hold over 30,000 gallons of water, and it's slowly going to release it. And I'm going to just... Dave, hey, what's the one that's further down? So like, right down here that the town is concerned about. On the softball field? Yeah. That's, that's the lines that come over from Weller development and run across the field hockey field into the woods. Okay. That's the line of the farmers. Well, the same concern applies there. So we had a meeting here where we, the board, talked about having bigger pipes if, in fact, it would help save our fields. But the concern, again, was what you're going to do with bigger, with bigger lines down near Sherpine. Hmm. So where does this slowly empty? It'll empty into the same spot. It empties back into the woods. But slower. But much slower. There's 18 inches of stone underneath those little Quonset huts. There's 18 inches of stone on top of them. So your time lapse camera shoots a picture every five seconds? It's roughly, I've set it up to 20 seconds because it's just chewing up my hard drive space. So that's why, that's where all the dirt's coming from. <laughs> Oh, yeah. It was a hell of a hole. <laughs> <laughs> so that just to give it that, that bulldozer's driving on top of them. That's how strong those things are. So the, the, the point of this is A that it's there and B that we realize that we can't plant trees on top of this thing or you're that's just gonna where, plug it so, all up. Marlene, that's where you and I sat for the baseball game. That's where that is. Okay. So we have, we have cameras up there that are taking this time lapse of what's going on. And I'm trying to capture as much as I have been able to, including the refreshment stand being built, the field being uh, scraped <coughs> off, and all the dirt being hauled off and things like that. And if, excuse me, eventually what will happen is I'll work with Young and Wright, and we'll basically take all of this video and stitch it all together into one real nice video that kind of shows the progression of the entire process of what happened up there. So, but I wanted to, I wanted to A, give you a, a little bit of flavor of what's going on. Again, remember we, we got rid of the students yesterday and today we already had about a third more contractors here and come Monday we're going to have probably three times as many. So there's an awful lot going on and a whole lot more that's got to happen. So I will answer any questions. Can you go back to the original PowerPoint? You Can you see if there's questions on the original PowerPoint? The which one? The first one you showed. The the uh, the, the piping? No, you can do those original PowerPoint. The actual PowerPoint. The classroom is in the classroom. The, band room. Mm -hmm. the staging facility that's in it. the bus garage. And let's just go picture by picture and see. All right. That's the high school staging area. This was the office where Mary Banco and Patty Bowe. And this is where you're putting an HVAC system in because they were getting the exhaust out of the mechanics. Right. So there will be fire rated walls and properly constructed offices put in there as well. This is where Sherry Stevens' desk was adjacent to the driver's room. Um, again, pointing throughout the, all the buildings. This was Jen Walker's room? It's a fourth grade wing, so we call the mm -hmm. district office space. And this was next door to Jen, who's in that room. 
Just so you know, I gave her the ceiling tile. I was just going to ask you if that's why they're empty. <laughs> she is building a wall in her home with those ceiling tiles. I mean, as a remember. Did you really? <laughs> so she asked me if she could have them, and I said, sure. Okay. She's building a wall in the house? <laughs> the kids drew on them or something. Oh. Oh, they, yeah, were they were all painted. Just looks like we don't normally get parts of the building away. So. That was her retirement plan. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the reality is the way the contracts are written, the contractors would have pulled them out and thrown them out. Right. So right. at least they're going to a good use. And I've already talked to them and said, hey, look, whatever tile is left, you're not throwing out. I need attic stock. So, okay, this is, um, there were the boys and girls showers. Now they're being joined together to create a huge storage room for the portable bleachers for the gym. And for all the materials that are no longer going to be stored in the current storeroom because it's going to be part of the district office. Thanks for clarifying that. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? Like, we said the girls and boys showers are being joined together. Yeah. It's 2018. I won't tell you the way pool was when I was in school. <laughs> okay. So, um, obviously the elementary gym has seen some facelift already, um, painting, glass backboards, um, gym floor is done but not done right. So I'm forcing them to redo it. Um, I'm not happy with it. The final finish coat was not good. So it's going to be a delay in that being a finished area, but we have time right now, so. Can you go up on the wall where the indents are and just explain what we're doing there? Oh, okay. Um, there's four of them. There's four of these little things. So, I talked to Carl Walker about, I think I did. Yes, you did. Okay, about coming in and painting Eden, E-D-E-N, one, one letter in each one of those, because there are four of them. So he's agreed to do that. We bought the paint, and he'll do it for nothing. And uh, that'll be one of the final finishing touches mm -hmm. once everything else is done. Yeah. So that, that gym will be a very nice gym when it's finally finished. And again, we, we're going to have some portable bleachers that will be used in this gym, um, probably along this side, um, to A, give the parents and, and visitors someplace to sit, and B, to try and keep as much of the you know, the, the filth that they dragged into the building at least contained to one side. Okay, this was the ticket booth and the phone booth. Um, everybody hoped that everything was going to come out modular, but it didn't. Back when this was built, it was built in place. So there is a pile of the lumber sitting there. Some of it will get repurposed. When this opening is closed up and this paneling needs to look like this paneling all the way across this opening. So the reason for closing up that opening is so that visitors can't come in and go directly upstairs until they are allowed to go. Right. So it adds an extra security layer to the lobby. And then the kids will come straight down the stairway and out where the old telephone booth was. Right. This will be a big opening right here, which is... <coughs> that will now open up into what is the lobby. <coughs> the auditorium, they're already setting scaffolding to pull the ceiling down. So That's they the can, elementary school, right? Right. Okay. Um, so they can put the HVAC ductwork in there for the, for the new system so it can be air conditioned. That's been an interesting room to do, too, because it's really a, a historic site. So you can't just do what you want. Right. There's a tremendous number of architectural elements they have to be added in. Um, a lot of the gutters that were ripped off of the building are being replaced um, with new copper gutters. This roof we're doing as a time and material add because the 
shingles that were on here, the slate shingles, um, basically what was happening is the ice and snow from the roof above was coming down and destroying these. It was, slate is very brittle. And if you hit it, it will crack, it'll break. So um, we're working with the contractor. They're going to put ice and water shield on this roof. The sub, the, the sub roof is fine. All the sheathing is fine. And we're going to put a synthetic slate up there, which is basically a plastic material. Um, we have some on other parts of the building already that, that match up pretty well. So it should be fine. Hope preserve that. The front facade looks really good. Yeah. Yeah, there's the guy that's painting it. He's doing a pretty good job. Um, originally, that was all wood. Now it's basically styrofoam. Most people would never think that, but it is. That one is. And the same thing with this. This this actually is a huge piece of styrofoam. You couldn't see that before. You might yeah. get one. Hmm? I couldn't well, see that. The water. Like I'm envisioning. No. They basically they coat it with concrete. And that same, if you look around the building, that the and I don't know. I guess it was because grapes were very prevalent at the time this building was was built. That same grape theme is in a lot of places in that building. It's in the front foyer. The front foyer and up in the plaster cornice, up in the library, and obviously the, the, the gable ends of the building. Um, we are running all new power wiring to connect the elementary school to GLP, high voltage lines. So, we currently have lines that are buried underground out here at the street that are not in conduit and not encased in concrete. Now they will be on our property, encased in concrete and in conduit. And this will put be. the bus garage, GLP, and elementary on the grid. And this will put them, all three buildings, on the grid. It's back there. That piece that was missing? It is. Back in place. Okay. And obviously, everybody remembers that this hallway, when we got the right kind of rain down here, we had 25 or 30 buckets. Over the years, this, this brick wall was sealed. It had all kinds of issues. Um, and it was one of those things that I was really happy to see happen. There's that chimney that was falling apart that uh, comes from the basement where the boilers are for the pool and take care of the gymnasium. So that entire wall was taken down from the, the brickwork was taken down from the very roof all the way down to the, the roof deck down below. And the reason that the water was seeping in is because this flashing was not sealed against the Is that wall. looking down? That's looking down. So the water was just going in between the flashing and the brick? Correct. So new flashing was added. It was, um, as, as well as new insulation, the flashing was terminated back at the cinder block the way it should have been. And all <coughs> sealed back up. <clears throat> and that's the finished wall. So. So that corner is not done because there is a crack at the base, right? Is that one? The one we're coming to? Yeah, the one right there at the side. Above the chimney. Go left. Go this? Left. Yeah. 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 Yes. This is the, the corner by the swimming pool. There's, there's two issues. This is a steel beam, and this is a foundation wall. And what, what you see has happened is that the water has gotten in between the brickwork and that foundation, been, uh, been able to freeze, and it's actually cracked that whole section out. So we've had a structural engineer come in, he's taking a look at a way to fix that problem, to resupport that beam, and then this wall will be bricked back up. Again, there's that chimney. They still have to put the cap on it, but at least that's done. 
In the band room, all the acoustic tiles were taken off and replaced. The carpet is gone. Um, all the asbestos and mastic and anything that was associated with any of that work has been removed. Same in the chorus room. Um, kind of interesting how concrete changes over time. This is where the risers were versus the area under the carpet. Um, all the walls that were between these offices, those are gone. This was the entryway. There was a practice room over here, storeroom. That room was removed. The door going in here will be removed, and a double door will be put in place so that they can now move the grand piano in there. Those are the practice rooms that you enter from the hallway, and the windows go, you can see into them from the band room. This is the small room that is between the hallway leading to backstage of the auditorium. And these were where the orchestra. Yep. Yep. This is this is where those practice rooms are. There's one office that remains back over in here. So the walls in between the like back rooms and the other upstairs are standing. Mm -hmm. In the auditorium, the lighting is going to be changed from incandescent to LED. Um, these three fixtures in the back of the room were converted so we could see the difference, the light level, and see how well it dimmed and worked. Um, we'll be using roughly about <coughs> a quarter of the power that we are currently using to light all of the fixtures in the house. Um, it produces a brighter light, a wider light, um, at the seating. And I took some of the students that were in there for a study hall and put them in that area and asked them whether they liked it, whether it was too glary, too bright, whatever. They said it was fine. They said it actually was a little better because they could see the books that they were working out of. So. <laughs> <coughs> um, the loading dock, um, this is one of those projects I'm happy to see get finished because this one was concerning me for quite a long time. We never had the ability to um, unload a semi without putting in a homemade aluminum plate. And it now, weighs about how much? <laughs> Yeah, the, the, the plate itself weighs probably around 300 pounds. But the point is that when you would take a ton of copy paper and bring it off a semi down that plate, it was pretty scary. But our guys were having to manually lift it, manually put it down, pick yep. it back up, store it. So it put a real restriction on, on anything that came or went out of the building. Right. So this will have a hydraulic lift on it. Correct. There will be a plate that will go up and down and be able to adjust the different, different heights of different vehicles. This was basically at the start of the project um, when they mobilized and they started cutting away the hill back here to make room for the broke back track and the track and field events that are going to, excuse me, that are going to take place in that area. Long jump, high jump, those kind of things. That is that same area. This drainage is basically um, right where the scoreboard is and will extend out for the shot put and the discus cage areas. So those will drain off, which we, that's an area we don't have now. This is the area where the electric line is going to come from school view up to this point where there will be a pad mount transformer and then feed into the concession stand which is... Can you back up? Go ahead. Can you just orient me? Can I orient you? That's the, that's the driveway. Yeah. This, is, this is our driveway. Right. This is... Um, let me see if I can... This is... Towards the baseball fields. Yeah. It's actually back here. Yeah. 
So can you go back to that one? Because the only reason I want you to do that, James, I want to talk about something I've only had a chance to talk to Paul about. So this is not on Cogen and will be coming on the grid as well. So we have to bring lines to, to the concession stand um, and the field. And so um, there was some conversation about how that electricity was going to get to the concession stand. Um, the unfortunate piece is, is that National Grid made the decision that they were going to go talk to neighbors over on Merrill and tell them that we were cutting down trees um, <coughs> um, and that the district itself didn't want to bring the line down on this side of school view, which is totally inaccurate. If I can quote David, it's an outright lie, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. right? Outright lie. So, so we are currently working on bringing the power from across Jennings, putting a pole on the corner of Jennings and school view, and then running the line underground on our side of the street to maintain that tree line on the other side of the street. So in talking with the campus today, that's where we are right now. Um, we will not be coming off with Merrill. We will not be cutting down trees. And it's really unfortunate that, that the workers from National Grid chose to, to create a situation that's not true. But I'm very grateful to the owner for calling me. And you, you, you do need to know that we own 15 feet the other side of School View Road. And the school district does own that. You have to remember that when the high school was here, that road didn't exist. Mm -hmm. So when the road was put through there, it was intentionally left so that there was property on the other side to prevent driveways and things from exiting onto School View, interrupting the flow of traffic to and from the school. So the concession building is uh, finally has a concrete floor. Um, all the services were put underneath. I have pictures of those, but that is much exciting. But um, at this point, what you're looking at is basically, let me see where I'm, where I'm at. This is the garage in the back. Up front here is where the concession area is. These are the bathrooms. There are three of them, a family, a men's and a women's bathroom. And in the middle is a small utility room. And this will be the, looking from the football field to the concession area, yeah. there will be a porch. There's, these will be pillars here. There will be a porch here and a couple doors here to get into the garage as well as to the concession, concession area itself. So we roll up doors and counter and that kind of stuff. So. Gas line? I didn't see the gas line there. Or it's, it's it's there. It's it's not there, but it's there. It will be. It will be there. Oh, it's, it's not current. It's it's there. It's plumbed. Yeah. Well, it's not plumbed yet, but it's going to be there. Um, what you see here, these these rolls are basically flat grain. So once they get all this graded out the way they have to. We're going to start laying out this flat grain and, and doing lifts of stone in very various grades. Um, the flat drain will be laid basically on a diagonal and feed into these what look like cinder blocks that will run around the track and that's basically the conduit for connecting um, the water system together. These trees probably look a little familiar because those were the trees that went up to the football field and they uh, kind of look nice running along their driveway. Like them. And again, this is where that whole water retention system is. So this will all be graded back down a little bit toward the baseball diamond and you know we can certainly add some trees back in here eventually. So David and I thought that it's been moving at a fast pace, but we're assured that come Monday that we've not seen anything yet. So no. it's going to get really, really busy. Question about the uh, Martin Lafond um, baseball field on Jennings. What is going to become of that? We have a meeting on July 10th for people to get together uh, to talk about what it could or could not be, what the cost could or could not be, because it's not part of the original project. Um, so we've right now saved a lot of shale from the field, just in case that field does get in, um, increased. Uh, David's submitted a possible drawing to come back toward the field as opposed to come aside along, along Jennings. Um, and that dirt can create, some of that dirt can create a burn, so that it's not a, 
an eyesore for across the road, but so there's a meeting scheduled for July 10th. Just like John McCarthy, Ronnie Maggs, David, me, some, yeah, some people. I, mean, that, I know when they have games there, you know, people are parking up on Jenny. Yep. That's dangerous. I was out with car door off one day, someone getting out of the car, you know, that's a 45 mile an hour road. Yep. Extremely dangerous. And the signs have gone up on the other side of the street for no parking, so it already creates an issue. So we're going to attempt to address that issue on the time. Good question. Questions for David? Nice job, David. Thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, item three. Yes. <laughs> Request to withdraw specific items from consensus items. Moving on to item four, routine action. Approval of consensus items. Recommended motion that the following consensus items be approved as listed in the administrative memorandum A through S. Second. Yeah, I'm going to see how. Do I say? Is that the one that yes, I was looking for? Should it be A through R? Do you think? Because that's yeah. the new one. I thought we had met something no, that's part of the budget transfer. No, it's not new. So let's do A through R. Okay, so re remove uh, or approve uh, the items listed in the administrative memorandum A through R. Second. Approve the discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carried. Uh, this is the uh, uh, time where the board that the board is designated to receive statements from individuals and groups. The board will review all statements and respond appropriately at a future meeting. All persons in attendance are required to sign the attendance sheet and designate the representation status. For example, parent, teacher, bus driver, chamber of commerce, etc. There is a two-minute time limit. recommended motion that upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the designation of the director of finance, Thomas Murphy, be accepted effective July 3rd, 2017. The board and administration wish to thank Mr. Murphy for his four years of service to the district. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carried. Four years ago, not having been a business official, but having known just about every ancillary position around it, uh, through some pretty tough um, transitions. And so, uh, thank you. We came in almost together. He came in on voting day, um, so the budget vote in 2013. And Tom moves on to Queen Hill from July 5. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And good luck. Item 2, accept resignation, that upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the resignation of cafeteria monitor Deborah Dintz be accepted effective June 20th, 2017. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carried. Item B, appointments. All appointments will not be effective in service to the district. Pursuant thereto shall not begin until there has been compliance with statutory and regulatory provisions for fingerprinting certification and clearance for employment. Here are the recommended motions. Number one, appoint an elementary teacher. Recommended motion that upon the recommendation of the superintendent, Danae <laughs> Lamarca, sorry, who was initially certified in Students with Disabilities 1 through 6 and Childhood Education 1 through 6, is hereby appointed to a probationary position in the elementary tenure area for a uh, probationary period commencing on September 1st, 2017 and ending on August 31st, 2021, unless extended in accordance with the law. This expiration date is tentative and conditional only, except to the extent required by the applicable provisions of Section 3012 of the Education Law. In order to be granted tenure, the teacher must receive composite or overall annual performance, professional performance review ratings pursuant to Section 3012D of the Education Law of, Don't either, read. Just keep reading. <laughs> of either effective or highly effective in at least three of the four preceding years, and if the teacher receives an ineffective composite or overall rating in the final year of the probationary period, the teacher shall not be eligible for tenure at that time. Salary is based upon ETA contract master's step one. Second. Any 
any questions on that? Lauren, do we know what grades today's teaching? Nate is going to be in first grade. And Danae is here. Seeing no further questions, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carried. Now you can now. Which is really nice of you to come. And her dear friend, I forgot your name, I'm sorry. Alana. Alana. So it's really sweet that they both came. And we stole it from the Buffalo City School District. <laughs> so welcome to make Did you say stole or rescue? long-term substitute teacher that upon the recommendation of the superintendent Joshua Walker who was initially certified in childhood education through two and one through six be approved as a long-term substitute teacher replacing Carol King from September 1st 2017 to June 30th 2018 salary is based upon master step one second any questions or discussions Joshua would be in kindergarten yes agreed oh, okay. And he is also here. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 <laughs> all right, seeing no questions, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carried. Now we And Joshua is also been in and out with us in multiple positions this all year. year. Yes. All year. And Josh's dad is here, sitting next to him, who some yes. of you may know. He uh, used to sit on our school board how many years ago? Uh, I've been on a bench 11 years, so 11 years ago. 11 years ago, years ago. I had Shep's position for a while. <laughs> Actually, it was more than 11 years, because I think, Mr. Walker, you were on the board that hired me, and well, that was 14 years ago. That was 1980-something. <laughs> <laughs> so, congratulations and welcome, Josh. Thank you. And thank you for this year. We know we've put you through an awful lot. And, and if it's okay with you, because they all have to be at work tomorrow, I'm going to... Yes, take them out. Take them out. Yeah, they're going to be very busy. <laughs> and you're hoping to start as soon as possible, right? Yeah, as soon as possible. There's two applicants I believe you may be looking at tonight um, that I would like to get on board just as quickly as possible. Because we've got moves starting next week already. Well, it's, it's already started. Yeah. It really has. Again, well, I July saw, 1. I, I saw someone down at the receiving dock yesterday trying to find boxes, and one of your guys said, 
There's no more lunches, therefore there's no more boxes. Mm -hmm. You're going to miss your time. Right. Yep. Is this coming out of the capital budget or? Mm -hmm. or no. This was built into the into the project. Okay. Next summer too, because this will happen in Lawrence building next year. Right. Further questions or discussions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Stay in motion carried. Item D, approve security for Smart Schools Bond. That upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the draft of the Smart School Investment Plan be approved as presented. Second. Discussion or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Stay in motion carried. Item E, approved district code of conduct. That upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the 2017-18 district code of conduct be approved. Second. Questions or discussions? Yeah, I just have a few. I, I do believe that you're going to see this code of conduct come back up at the July 5th meeting because there are a few other uh, recommended changes that our students themselves have made. And so in wanting to recognize uh, what, our, what our students have become involved with and been courageous enough to come forward, we're going to bring it back to you on the 5th and possibly Haley or Maureen know something. So can you just talk a little bit about that? We have um, to approve it here tonight, even still. So, the, are, do you like the dress code? Mm -hmm. So, I gave a presentation um, at the like very end of the school year, like the last week, to the shared decision making team, and we brought up um, different vocab to use for the actual dress code. Um, I believe the specific words that they came up with will be presented at the July meeting, but we just kind of Try to find more um, respectful, like up to date vocabulary to put in the agenda. We appreciate you taking the time to do all of that. So, so Ms. Menkenna will come on July 5, or Mr. Cervoni, so I'd encourage you to speak up or come on that. Will you be here? I'll be at Girl State. Oh, good for you. Thank you. Nice one. All right. So, it'll come back on July 5. Um, and we'll come back up for its 30-day wait, and then in August when we have a meeting before, we can take a look and choose to approve it. What is an example of the vocab? So, I think that, I would like to No, we were trying to, we were trying to speak, so some of the things that they say now are um, appropriate, like the word appropriate, but a lot of people can take, like, you can't really define the word appropriate, people take it differently, so they were using, like, specific words like referring to like your body like I know some of them that was said is like no cleavage no midriff uh, like, back front side midriff yeah back front right. side midriff because our clothes um, now allow for back midriffs front midriffs no yeah. no clothing that has been altered to reveal any of those things <laughs> so like cutoffs like you can't wear those um, but yeah. tried to like eliminate the word appropriate well, that makes sense. Though. It's appropriate because kind of yeah. what's appropriate yeah, to one person. That was the that was the big push yeah. is the um, the word effective and how the way that it's being enforced. It's like a lot about what happened in the meeting. Half it was like the enforcement. The other half, a lot of people were arguing about the um, the strap rule. It said an appropriate strap length of one width of one inch. So they were trying to change that to a shirt must have straps or sleeves that are not like pulling their shirt to be revealing okay. of like image or image. There's a whole billboard of pictures when you see. Yeah, so we so I have a whole presentation I had, like, a PowerPoint <laughs> presentation and then <coughs> Mrs. Klopp helped us create like a Who's one of the biggest enforcers of the of the dress code? She's she's one of the biggest enforcers of the dress code because she's one of the biggest enforcers of the rules. It's not necessarily that she agreed with them, but she, that's her job, so she's not gonna not but she helped us make this billboard type thing with like tons of pictures on half appropriate and half not appropriate. I think it's great the way you guys approach it. I really you. appreciate it. Uh, I would make a recommendation too, that you're, you're a senior, so it might be something that you can pass on, is to do that in February or March next year before she comes to present to the board, and then they will only need to come forward once. So just put it on every year. She's going to get involved. Yeah. Okay. Other questions or discussions? Um, oh. um, I heard at the shared decision meeting, I think there was a, next year is a trial for backpacks in the school. They said, so the shared decision making team said they were going to add backpacks. Yeah. Is that because because, the, because the tote program? bags that the kids have been using don't oh, hold all the books. Yes. Yeah. They hurt kids' shoulders. Yes. So mm -hmm. I have well. They did. At the dress code meeting, we did um, talk about backpacks, and they said that had already been. That's like, already been in this code. Yeah. Yeah. 
but there are certain parameters. For There's smaller packs, packs the smaller. not the bigger packs. That with that she brought up at the last meeting. Yep. Very good. Any other questions? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Motion carried. Item F, approved bus use for Eden Kinder Care field trips, that upon the recommendation of the superintendent, transportation via school bus or buses be approved for the Eden Kinder Care summer field trips for summer 2017. Second. Questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Staying motion carried. Item G, accept Heroes Grant from Hamburg Lowe's, that upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the Heroes Grant from Hamburg Lowe's valued at $2,541.81 which will include the building of a community garden at Eden Elementary, the supplies and volunteers that will work with the team of GOP volunteers be accepted. Second. Questions or discussion? The exciting thing about this is that our elementary school kids now travel down to GLP to work in that garden. So by putting this up at the elementary school, they'll be able to stay at their own building, work in their own garden, and GLP will get the benefit of a garden that's already in place. So it's really exciting. What I will come forward to the board in the summer with is a possible MOU to add two volunteer or to add two advisors for GLP so that pre-K through two can work their gardens, and that will come out of the grant from Senator Gallivan for the last year. So it's no possible just to take a useful point of the grant. Or they looking at foot in this garden. Don't know because uh, there's not a whole lot of light over the elementary school, and the problem right now is the construction project. So David, kind of behind the building, where because um, I know you guys have been working with David. Where? Yeah, kind of behind the building. Um, there's already two small beds there. Oh, like over where Kelly Grimaldi's mm -hmm. is. So, so it's the L Cove mm -hmm. okay. facing the Legion. Yeah. There's a water source back there, and the that's not. Nice. Thank you. I didn't even see you sitting. You get enough sun, though? Not as much as they want, but sun. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. It'll become a competition. You we'll just cut down some trees. This is the best night. Nice. It's not a way to leave us. Of course we Is that on recording? <laughs> <laughs> All right, seeing no more questions. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain, motion carried. Item H, approve increase in position that upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the 0.83 FTE special education teacher position be increased to 1.0 FTE. Second. Discussion? This is to accommodate the bubble at sixth grade, but in return for this, uh, there were two aides that were going to be hired. Uh, I have promised from Sean that in place of that, there will be one. Hopefully that's the case. Aren't the two weeks taken out of the budget? In the budget process? But you also answer the time this Okay. Any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain, motion carried. Item I approve accessing of music department equipment that upon the recommendation of the superintendent, music department items be accessed and disposed of as the district deems appropriate. Most items are in poor condition and have no asset tax. Second. Questions or discussions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining motion carried. Item J, approve appropriations. Increase that upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the 2016-17 appropriations be increased by $3,084.02. $29,450,484.95 to account for increased revenues. Second. Discussion or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Motion carried. Uh, now on to information and proposals. The business report. Fine. Very short, very simple. Last year we See. talked. He sets himself <laughs> up every time. Well, last year we talked about tax collection. It was one year, and you guys need to talk if you want to do it for next year. I'm done. But it has to be decided by when. Um, you guys need to give direction to authorize having to talk to Missy Harvey to see if you guys want to do it. It needs to happen by the reorg meeting. Well, this. Our oh, cool. This is the conversation. You need to look to see which way you want to go. So what we've done is we've done one year <coughs> contracts with the town before. 
Pardon. I would share with you that we are still in a position where I don't believe taking it on as a district is in our best interest um, at all. And especially right now in the middle of the capital, capital project where everything is closed. And with the new director of finance and with the new director. So we don't have to keep it to one year because the capital. You could do two years. Yeah. Uh, you could do two. I would think that would make sense. You could do Three. as many Three. as you want. Do whatever you want. I would say at least two because that's when the capital will put them in the project. And they address it in two. And, and then take a look at it. Those are the final answer. We have two years. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. okay. So then we'll put that on for uh, the fifth. Okay. Thank you. Is there something you can get to me by that day? I don't even need any conversation. Uh, <laughs> 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 She's willing to do it. And willing to hold it. Wasn't we'll there a software update last year? They were talking about it. They did. They did. They did. They did. They did. I'm going to keep that certificate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, item B, superintendent's report. So the Michigan State Survey is up on the top of our website. It's primarily a, a dissertation um, survey by a gentleman at Michigan State's doctoral program taking a look at the political side of, of three to eight assessment opt-outs. So while the district itself um, has no uh, purview in this survey, what we did is to send out a school messenger to our parents, and if they choose to go to our website and fill it out, they do. We don't send the link to them. We're not trying to push it. But if, in fact, parents want to get involved, if they, they can. Um, and it's open until the end of June only. SED minimum 100 day attendance. This is a really big, big deal. And so in keeping with SED, they sent things out in April and wanted to take effect right away. And so what they did is to state that half days for kindergarten can no longer gain state aid. Effective 16, 17, and 17, 18. And everybody went crazy saying, but wait a minute, we already did our half days this year. We can't have an effective 16, 17. But the guidance is out for 17, 18, and beyond. So they're not saying we can't have half days. And we currently contractually do seven to eight half days in the school year at the elementary level. We cut them back at the high school level for many reasons. But at the elementary level, at least three of them are for grading. And we do a really good job with our elementary teachers of making sure that they're having conversations and, and making sure that it's very more behavior and standards based. What SED is stating is, is that if you have a full day kindergarten and you have a half day attendance that you can no longer claim state aid for a kindergarten. Well, that creates a problem for us because one, it's a contractual issue. And secondly, I'm not going to just bring in kindergartners for the full day when everybody else has gone home half day and then just have kindergartners on the school bus going home. Because kindergarten's not required. It's not, it's not, a, um, it's not a mandated great in the state doesn't want to pay for something that's not mandated. It's my suspicion. It's my personal feeling. I have not gotten an answer to it yet. Um, beyond that, we can manage just about everything else that comes out of it. But this one um, has gotten in the way of our calendar. You have approved a calendar for next year. We are ready to order our calendar that goes home to parents for next year. This, this number two is going to require us to get back with the union and negotiate try to figure out how do we do professional development on seven days. So in September, we have a day that's scheduled for APPR, which is really important for our teachers. We have a half, two half days scheduled in January for parent-teacher conferences. I don't know how to do that any other way. And so um, unfortunately, our, ca our calendar is either going to come out with no half days in it, or it's going to come out with half days that aren't right because we can't have half days. So we're still trying to figure out what we can get done before the last day of going to print on the calendar. But this is a really, really major issue. Did you see anything about half days at the elementary level that fall during the regions? Yep. So we can manage that. If we could figure out how to do the half days for kindergarten, we can just simply, like, like we just had a half day at the elementary school this past week. Mm -hmm. So we would just move it to the week before. That's right. all. Sure. But I can't move it to the week before and keep kindergarten all day. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, in order to keep kindergarten all day, to me, to me even, if the, even if the district took on the expense of keeping kindergarten and bringing in subs, what you would have is only kindergartners on a school bus going home 
and not getting home at the normal time they're ready to go home at. If in fact you were to compress those bus routes to three or four buses, you'd now have drivers with only kindergartners on a route they don't know, with kids they don't know, and only kindergartners on a bus getting home at odd times. It's just, a, a, it's an absolute nightmare. The guidance did come out today that we have to follow it for 1718. So I will be bringing you a calendar for approval once we figure out the issues here. What if you don't follow it? What's the... They won't pay you state aid. It's worth about $22,000 to us. For just those half days? Just for kindergarten for half days. So what's that a dollar amount in fact roughly? Well, our foundation aid... dollars a day. Well, our foundation aid as a whole is $35,000. It'd be proportionate, so we'd have to figure that out. So. But we, what we did figure out, kind <coughs> of, how, like, Tom wants to do a specific I number. I can do to <coughs> It's about $3,000. So about twenty-one thousand dollars for seven days. For seven days to renegotiate contracts, worry about bus drivers. <coughs> to not it. renegotiate contracts. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, so you, you start looking at all these costs that are now going to come to effect to accommodate these seven days. Is it really worth the twenty-one thousand? Is the question you, you you need to start to look at. You know, you do, do you then take on the liability of the bus routes then? And. But there may be some other way for us to do what we need to do. You know, I mean, even, if, even if you pared it down to maybe it's a, a four-day conflict, you know, then that comes to just down to twelve thousand. Mm -hmm. You know, that might be the and avenue you take. We may versus also be able to do early release instead of half day because you just have to meet the minimum hours. So there are some things that us okay. can talk about. I mean, I'd be more in favor of looking at that instead of a complete. If you look at just the penny interest, and there's more than just the penny interest. If you look at just penny interest, even if you bring in a couple buses to take the kids home, it's still cheaper than the aid you would lose. So it, it really isn't so much the financial, it's all the other things that actually come into play that are you willing to forgo. No, but what I'm hearing to say is to take the loss. Take the loss. Take For some of the days. Right. Yeah. So I mean, if you compare that down to a, a four day loss instead of seven, mm -hmm. take the now it's $12,000 loss. Right. That's a lot cheaper than renegotiating, renegotiating bringing on additional liabilities. The additional bus runs, you know, you start looking at it and... I know. And if these kids are coming on at different times, it's going to be different. What's well, that's, that's the whole liability be, thing that you start well, running into. it's going to be difficult for the parents getting... You just don't know what time so, the bus So, you know, care. you just bite the bullet and say, hey, we're just going to lose those, that $8 for those days. I so, one of the things that we might be able to do on some of the days, too, is to do early releases as opposed to half days. So, if you have five-hour minimums, five-and-a-half-hour minimums, that's not considered a half day. I basically told our district superintendent that for even this will basically get rid of half days if in fact we try to keep our state on it. So I'll come back on July 5th with a little answer for you. The closing school here has been super busy, so we really haven't, we haven't had a lot of conversation yet. But I appreciate your thoughts on that. End of your ceremonies have been an awful lot of fun, always. Pre-K graduation, second grade, ice cream parties, um, two dunk tanks. Uh, Kelly's been in the dunk tank with me at elementary school, Lauren at GLP. I must say, though, that Kelly's was much more agreeable because Mark Stevens warmed up the water <laughs> as opposed to GLP where it was ice cold coming out of the faucet. Um, it's just we got really lucky with our with our weather. It's just, although we could get rained on at GLP, it was, it was really a lot of fun. Mary Banco and her kids came with their animals, which was a lot of fun. Help me, Kelly, because I was wet, didn't see it all. Um, Amanda helped out, which was really good. What else? What else was going on? There the animals, the dunk tank, arts and crafts, arts games. and crafts, games. It was just the a storyteller. The face painting was something new this year. The okay. water soaking station. The water soaking yeah, the water station. station. And some of the high school kids went down to help out, which is really. With the fun. Face did painting. you go? Yeah, I did. I ran the like. They dumped the sponge in the water. The face oh, painting, yeah. a neighbor came to my door to show me. <laughs> sure. JJ, yeah, no, my, my class in particular loved the face painting. They just, they just loved it. Your class in particular liked getting me wet. That's <laughs> right. Yes, they did. I just want you to know. And so there was no explaining to her class that they had to hit the target. They just simply figured out that if I just walk up to it, push it. <laughs> the same thing happens. You were so a great support. Point, right? There's no point in trying to get it. I can do it better this way. <laughs> just, just a really, really nice end of the year, so we're really excited about that. Um, you saw a lot of slides from David. We will be moving as the district and business office, I believe. If we've landed in the second week of July. Um, I appreciate the laborers that you approved today so that we can actually get boxes out because right now, um, 
baby leaps, Bob has been doing most of the box moving, and there's just no way that we can accommodate that on our own. But the location of the Board of Education meetings beginning in September, we shall talk about um, come July, uh, because we won't have our all done in September, but maybe we'll have it in elementary school done by October. No, I don't know. I don't. They so say, they're saying no Christmas concerts even. No Christmas even at this point. So we initially, may send up initially they there. said that they would try to have it open by December for the Christmas concerts, but they back me up. They're saying. January now, maybe February. So, so, the well. no, oh, <laughs> so and part of that is trying to maintain that historic sense of the ceiling that we're required to by 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 it's not ocean, David, who is it? New York State. Shippo. 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 Uh, Shippo. Shippo. My guess is we're gonna keep that for board meetings here. Yes. Questions? No, my just my thought was with the auditorium we open here. Yes. Something you have to they could do. For Christmas concert. Yes, yeah. Yeah. That, that's already yeah. that. that's, and that's what we've done this year too. Is we've just been bringing everybody here. It's been an amazing mm -hmm. amount of reorganization. Then um, beyond that, but it's not up on the board. Is um, I just like to out. I'd like to acknowledge our two outgoing board members, Michael Burns and Mike Breeden. Um, Mike Breeden, I'll start with, who has contributed six years. Longer than me. <laughs> so, Michael, thank you. Thank you. Andrew Beamer. I want that display. Oh, it will be. <laughs> I won't tell you what room it will be. <laughs> and for Michael Burns, also, uh, Michael's been with the board for five years, even though I've been. Five and a half. Five and a president for three, and so thank you. I enjoy it. Thank you all the time as well. And Michael has a plaque, and I'd, I'd like you to know this is the second print of this plaque. Why? So if you want the first one, it's in my purse because I, all this time, thought that you served two, three-year terms, and so and I've talked about that for four years, right? <laughs> and I was informed on Monday that you came in halfway through the first yep. year, so we have. So if you want the original that says no, 2011. Okay. You can keep it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just scratch it out and put Paul <laughs> And then also, I, I'd like to take a moment I need those, to recognize two students who truly had me thrown. Um, Maureen and her, is she twin? Yeah. Thank goodness, Bridget. <laughs> because I would walk up to Barb and I'd say, is there? Maureen, because it really looked like you, but didn't, right? I didn't realize that you were twins. And so, um, and, and, and sometimes Bridget would sit in for Maureen, and, and so we had two cards, one for Maureen and one for Bridget that the board has signed. We absolutely love having student representatives. We love having you because you speak up. And, and that's the point of it. And I can tell Haley's already going to do that. And so, would you like to introduce Haley before I cut up the video? Yeah, this is Haley. She's great. If you like her, talk you with Haley. She has she has a lot of like really good things. Excellent. So I'll give you this for Bridget because I'm, I'm pretty sure Bridget was here when you were not. Although I can't prove it because you look the same. Okay? Thank you. So thank you. I just want to let the board know, last night I met with the uh, North Collins Ride and Gun Club and they're interested in, in starting a trap shooting uh, program with the school, similar to the girls hockey team where we won't have any financial uh, concerns about that. They're going to raise the money, um, they're going to work with the boosters, that's going to help them. There are grants out there available for this. Um, several districts around us have already done this and this is also could lead to getting a rifle team here um, also which I think would be a big plus for this district um, a lot of districts around us have the rifle team some of the students that go out for the rifle team or for trap shooting are students that don't go other out for other sports um, there is money uh, for college scholarships for rifle um, actually, some of the articles I've read said it's easier to get a scholarship for being on a rifle team than playing football. So, and we're talking big schools like Ohio State, uh, Texas U, 
um, some big schools that give people sometimes free rides for just being on a rifle team. So we I know the schools are teams, like Collins is a team. And a club. And they, a club. They have both. Pioneer is a team, but not a club. They're going to start a club. They're Just working, start a club. And okay. Springville is working on a club. Um, so there are a lot of districts. Um, so I will share this information with Marissa. Uh, I sent a sample letter that the superintendent from Allen sent after the board approved it. So basically what it is, is the board needs to approve it um, without an advisor. So there is no money involved. There is insurance certificates that are um, presented to the school with the school's name on it. On a primary non-contributory basis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right here I have two copies, thank you, <laughs> that you can look at. and. Uh, that's the Holland uh, School District. It's stuff. Those are samples. It doesn't have the Holland School name on it, but the one they have in possession has. And it doesn't. Have it. it doesn't have that on there. So we'll definitely we'll talk to them. Them. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. So. Um, so this is something that I will share with Marissa, and it'll be coming up maybe in the July meeting, um, as far as uh, getting this approved so they can get it started. They have. Coaches already that are willing to volunteer their time. They have the North kids. College ready them though? Yep. The kid, they have kids. Yeah, there won't be any coaches from the school or anything like that. They have kids that are interested in starting this. Um, they're quite excited about this. What you need my understanding is there's not home and away games. You shoot no. you shoot your own range. And that by X time you have to submit your scores while the other team's shooting at their own range. So then the and transportation and the travel. So there's no travel. The whole fast. conversation we had about guns nice. on buses and yeah. all of that nightmare is not you're always shooting your home range. The guns are stored at the home range. Mm -hmm. You shoot your score matches the other team's score because they're shooting at their home range, and then you know, a winner is declared, and that's all the standings are. Right. That's all it's all. So it's pretty unique and, and solved an awful lot of the concerns that we had. Yes. That we couldn't really figure out how we could make it work. Yeah. So this will work. Yeah. All the season is this um, winter. Winter. And it they at Holland they've been able to coordinate it where the kids are able to also compete in other sporting events at the school, and then they practice after school, and then they go to the range. Um, like the North Collins Rod and Gun Club will have open, and all their fields are lit there, so they have the capability of having practices later, so it does not interfere with students that want to participate in the sport and the club. So, would it be like a varsity sport? No, it would be club. So, any, so 7 through 12 could join it? Um, there are age limitations, but right now at Holland, that's what they have is like 7 through 12. And club, so there are some club, just like um, traveling club, really so much of that concept. Hockey is really a school sport, so it's really not. Oh, well, boys hockey is boys club. Hockey's club. Yes, yeah. Yeah. girls hockey is a team, so it's so much of boys, boys hockey. hockey. Okay. Cheerleading used to be club, but now it's part of the world. Now it's just so. And I sent you guys an email about a date of the 25th. If you have any questions, I did have some additional training that I can help you with that. And we will um, be scheduling an executive session next week also. Um, I will be contacting you guys to see when it works out so the best. The yeah. Um, so that if you have the report done by the 25th, then we will have an executive session that week to finish it up for the end of the school year. So if you have any questions, feel free to contact me at my cell phone or email me and I can explain if you're having problems. And, and we also have to. And one other thing, I've been working with Lucinda a little bit on the phone system. With We're hoping to be able to when we get the new phone system, when we put somebody on hold, we're hoping if we can get the rights to the music for the school here, that we can have our own students' music on hold. Also, thinking about this for... I've been trying to work on it with OCs and 
uh, I called BOCES and then the superintendent had to call BOCES to say that I could talk to BOCES where I work. <laughs> they wouldn't talk to me. <laughs> Doesn't that sound like the organization we work for? <laughs> so anyhow, if we can get the rights, it would be nice if we had uh, somebody put on hold to have our own students, you know, kind of promote our own students. Uh, you know. They can do their own PSAs on hold. So, that's all I got. Anything else from any of the other? Yeah, I, I, I'd just like to say thank you. It's, uh, it's, it's been uh, fun. a good six years. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we Your laugh, we cry, little. you know. Your kids were little. We wrote short stories. Um, <laughs> Be careful what you say. I'm the next person. Uh, I know. Well, you, you cry a lot. Uh, and uh, and uh, you beat your head against the wall, so make sure you know how to repair sheet rock. Um, but no, it, it's been a, a great experience. Um, it, it's you know thanks to the administration, the teachers, and, and and such. It's the help. I mean, it's not an easy endeavor, especially for the incoming. It's 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 a difficult time. Um, in the, in the state, not only in our district, but uh, it is a difficult time. And, um, we've done some good things here in the past six years, and I, I know you'll carry forward um, and uh, do a great job. So uh, it's been a pleasure working with everyone, and uh, I'm kind of sad to go. I know I'm happy too. Especially in the executive session. So, but, <laughs> I know, I was going to fake sick or something. My mom's calling. But, uh, but uh, no, I don't want to thank everybody. I, I enjoyed the time. Thank you for thank your you. time as work and as vice president. When you served as a, so thank you. You should have been president. You could have got a plaque. I could have given you the plaque. <laughs> Because it's got the right dates around there. Right. 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 Thank you, sir. On future dates, could you just share with me who is not here July 5th? I'm going to be videoed in. <laughs> you are. Yeah. And you can do that? <laughs> not you. <laughs> Done? I'm here. Right. Video. I should be here, yeah. Okay. Oh, it's cool. Cheryl, you okay? Sure. Oh. All right. Then, then we do need for that to happen. We do really need to be in the cafeteria. You are in the cafeteria. Thank you. Thank you. It would be better than the last time, though, right? The last no, time was great. Don was last time was great. <laughs> yeah, yes, that was great. No, yeah. I meant your last <laughs> time. <laughs> no, we have a new Zoom. Wow. Yeah. 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 I love the Zoom. That was no, awesome. Well, I showed it at one point. Yeah. That was rough. Okay. Anything further? Yeah. If I not. What? I know what S was. Oh. It was a claims auditor report that she didn't have to me Friday morning, so I took it off and oh, just forgot to change it. Thank you. All right, so the reorg meeting is July 5th, 2017, 7 p.m. Cafeteria. That is it. Let me make a motion for you. You did it. I did it all night. Go ahead, Brandon. Just go. Thank it. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion, Any discussion or questions? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Motion carried. Thank you. Have a great night, everybody.